I just want people to understand that Crimea was a, you know, it was another bad hand. I got handed North Korea. We're doing very well. I, you saw the letter yesterday, and we're doing very well. Look, we haven't had nuclear testing. We haven't had missile launches. We haven't had rocket launches. Uh, some sites were blown up, and we got back our hostages, our prisoners, uh, even before I left. So a lot of good things are happening. There's some good feeling there. We'll see what happens. It's a process. It's probably a longer process than anybody would like, but I'm used to long processes, too. Uh, we haven't taken off the sanctions. The sanctions are biting. We haven't taken them off. Uh, but when it comes to Crimea, that's something I took over, John. There's nothing uh, much I have to say about it other than uh, we will look at that just like I'm looking at many other disasters that I've taken over. I've taken over a lot of bad hands and I'm fixing them one by one, and I know how to fix them, okay? Thank you, Mr. President. Madam, Madam Prime Minister. Uh, President Trump says that he made suggestions to you on what to do about Brexit. Uh, can we ask you if you would make a suggestion to him on how to handle his meeting with Putin? Well, I think it's, it's very simple. We've been talking about this, in fact, today, which is what is important in meeting with President Putin. I, and I've welcomed the meeting with President Putin. But what is important is that uh, the president goes into this, as he is doing, from a position of strength and also from a position of unity in NATO. I think that is very important. Obviously, we've discussed the activity of Russia in many different ways, including that use of a nerve agent here on the streets of uh, uh, the United Kingdom and the impact that that has had. I welcomed, as I said earlier, the very strong response the United States gave to that. Uh, we had response from around the world. But I think the important thing is, and particularly following the uh, NATO summit, the president is going into this meeting with President Putin from that position of strength and a position of unity around that NATO table. Uh, Jason. Thank you, Jason Gross from the Daily Mail. Um, Prime Minister, uh, in the comments yesterday, your own MPs uh, sort of sided with Donald Trump, really, and, and said uh, this, this deal that you signed here at Chequers is going to be bad for trade. Why, why can't you convince your own MPs that it's a good idea? And Mr President, can I ask you, you've said Brexit's a, a tough situation. What would you do now? Would you, would you be at the point where you would walk away from the talks to show them that you mean business? Well, first of all, on, the, uh, on the, the issue of trade deals, as I've said earlier, what we're, we're negotiating and when we come out of the negotiations, I want to see and we will have our ability to have independent trade policy, to set our own tariffs, to be that independent member of the WTO, to be able to negotiate trade deals around the world, as we uh, will be doing. And we're looking, at, obviously, at the United States. We're looking at other areas as well, as we've said. We're looking at uh, issues like uh, the... the uh, possibility of some trade deals around the Pacific, uh, Pacific area too. Uh, we will negotiate those trade deals, but I also want to have a good trade arrangement with the European Union. This isn't an either or. We don't just replace one with the other. Actually, the United Kingdom is looking for and can negotiate a situation where we can have a good trade relationship with the European Union, a great trade relationship, a good trade relationship with the United States and around the rest of the world as well. And that is what will be good for jobs, good for people's livelihoods, good for prosperity here in the UK. Well, if you remember, I was opening Turnberry the day before Brexit, and we had an unbelievably large number of reporters there because everybody was there, I guess, because of Brexit. And they all showed up on the ninth hole overlooking the ocean, and I said, uh, what's going on? And they, all they wanted to talk about was Brexit. And they asked for my opinion, and I think you will agree that I said, I think Brexit will happen. And it did happen. And then we cut the ribbon. And the reason I felt it was going to happen was because of immigration, because I know I think one of the reasons I got elected was because of immigration. And I felt that Brexit had the upper hand. And most people didn't agree with me. If you remember, Barack Obama said, well, that your country will have to get on the back of the line if that happened, which I thought was a terrible thing to say, frankly. But I said I thought it was going to happen. And it did happen. And I also think uh, that as far as negotiating the deal, I probably would have done what my suggestion was to the prime minister, but my but she can always do that. She can do that. At some point, she can do what I suggested to her. No, well, you can't walk away because if she walks away, that means she's she's stuck. Can't walk away. Uh, but you can do other things. But uh, I, I she can do what my suggestion was. And my, my suggestion was, you know, respectfully submitted. Uh, she will, uh, 
she will do very well. I think she's a very tough negotiator. I've been watching her over the last couple of days. She's a tough negotiator. She's a very, very smart and determined person. I can tell you there are a lot of people that are looking up now saying, gee whiz, you know, she left a lot of people in her wake. She's a, a very smart, very tough, very capable person. And uh, I would much rather have her as my friend than my enemy. That I can tell you. Are we all friends, Mr. President? Go ahead. Uh, Jeff Mason from Reuters. I like your hat. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, Mr. President, as... Good without it, too. Good head of hair. Good, solid head of hair. Uh, it's, I don't have a good, solid know, head of hair, but thank you, exactly sir. What you have, Jeff. Um, <laughs> going into your meeting... Come on, Jeff. Take it off. Please. Oh, boy. Look, okay. <laughs> I like go. you better without the hat. Go ahead. There we go. Um, going into your meeting with President Putin on Monday, sir, you mentioned both denuclearization and you mentioned Syria. Can you say exactly what your message will be to him on Syria? What would you like him to say, especially given Assad's gains in the country uh, yeah. recently? And also, and, and on denuclearization, can you spell out a little bit how you expect that to happen in terms of treaties and in terms of talks? Well, it'll be a slow process. Don't forget, we're not the only ones that have nukes. And it would be a slow process. But for the world, it would be us and it would be others would have to come along simultaneously, obviously. Uh, but I think that uh, when I, when the meeting was arranged, and we both wanted the meeting, when the meeting was arranged, uh, it was, from my standpoint, I don't, I didn't go in with high expectations, but you may come out with something very exceptional. But the uh, proliferation is a tremendous I mean, to me, it's the biggest problem in the world, nuclear weapons, biggest problem in the world. I understand nuclear. Look up Dr. John Trump at MIT. He was my uncle, many, many years a professor. I used to talk nuclear with him, and this is many years ago. Uh, it's, the, it's the biggest problem, in my opinion, this world has, nuclear weapons. So if we could do something to substantially reduce them, I mean, ideally get rid of them, it's... Maybe that's a dream, uh, but uh, certainly it's a subject that I'll be bringing up with him. And it's also a very expensive thing, but that's the least important. So if we can, if we can do something. But I didn't go in, and I was telling uh, the prime minister before, I didn't go in with high expectations. I mean, we have, uh, we do have a a political problem where you know in the United States we have this stupidity going on, pure stupidity, but it makes it very hard to. And do something with Russia. Anything you do, it's always going to be, oh, Russia, he loves Russia. I love the United States, but I love getting along with Russia and China and other countries. And uh, it will certainly be, Jeff, something that we bring up and talk about. I, I think, to me, it's such a big problem. Syria, of course, I'm going to bring that up, and I'm going to bring up Ukraine, and I'm going to bring up other subjects also. Syria, what exactly you would like to hear from him and We're what you would like talk Russia about, to do? Yeah. Well, that was another one. I mean, the uh, red line in the sand was a problem for us. I mean, I, I think you President might be Obama in a different... Did, what would you like President Putin to do now under your watch? Sir? Well, I, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk to him about that before I talk to you. And uh, if something happens, that'll be great. And if it doesn't happen... Uh, I'm not going in with high expectations, but we may come out with some very surprising things. But relationship is very important, and having relationship with Russia and other countries, as I said a number of times, is, and I've been saying actually for years, and I've been certainly saying it during my campaign, having relationships with other countries is really a good thing. I think that I can't really uh, overestimate how big the meeting was yesterday with NATO. Uh, we went with something that really was an unfair situation to something that's unified. I mean, they had spirit. Those people were getting up and in the end, well, we are committing and we're, you know, they can't, they can't go, you know, it's not like they can go immediately back. They have to go through their parliaments and their congresses and their representatives and whoever, whatever form they have, but they have to go through a, an approval process. But I'll tell you what, every single person in that room was gung-ho to get it done, get the money in. And even before that, as you know, $34 billion, and I think that the Secretary General, Stoltenberg, who's doing a terrific job, by the way, uh, he said yesterday that because of President Trump, we've taken in $34 billion more for NATO. And I think the number is actually much higher than that, but $34 billion more, at least. And again, uh, that's nothing that 
my opponent would have done. My opponent would have, it would have just kept going down. You know, it was going down. You see what was happening over the years. The numbers were going down. Now the number's way up, and now it's going way up higher. And that was, and he will tell you that, that was because of me. Prime Minister May, the president during his time in, in Brussels expressed concern about a pipeline uh, between Russia and Germany. Do you share those concerns? And to follow up on some of the questioning from uh, my colleagues in the British press and on the American side, did you feel undermined by President uh, Trump's comments in The Sun about your Brexit plan and about Boris Johnson? No, look, I'm very clear that our Brexit plan will deliver on what the British people voted for. And we've had an excellent discussion here, as I've said about, and as uh, President Trump has said, about the uh, possibility and the uh, intent that we both have to have an ambitious trade deal uh, going forward. And I think that's, uh, that's exactly where we'll be going. And that's uh, very important for both, for both of our countries, actually. We stand, we have stood shoulder to shoulder with the United States in so many different ways over the years as a result of our special relationship. And we will show that even further through the trade arrangements that we will put in place in the, uh, in the future. And I have to just, just to finish off, Jeff, just to finish off, uh, I have to say, I said to that paper, The Sun, uh, and they seem like two very nice people, but I said that Theresa May is a, uh, one of them's nice, but I said, <laughs> she's a, sitting here. <laughs> oh, good. Where is that person? Where? Did I say nice things about Theresa May, please? Oh, good. Okay. If you reported them, that's good. Okay. Where? On the internet? <laughs> I said very good things. I thank, thank you very much for saying that. No, I said very good things about her. I didn't think they put it in, but that's all right. They didn't put it in the headline. I wish they put that in the headline. That's one of those things. And she's a total professional because when I saw her this morning, I said, I want to apologize because I said such good things about you. She said, don't worry. It's only the press. I thought that was very, I thought that was very professional. I might add, uh, I might add, uh, well, that's, that's, that's called being, oh, don't worry. I've been, they've been doing it to me and I do it to them. Uh, I, I do say, though, the pipeline, you asked about the pipeline. To me, it is a tragedy. I think it's a horrific thing that's being done where you're feeding billions and billions of dollars from Germany primarily and other countries, but primarily from Germany into the coffers of Russia when we're trying to do something so that we have peace in the world. I think it's a horrible thing that Germany's doing. I think it's a horrible mistake. And as much as I like Angela, I was very open in saying it. I think it's a horrible thing that you have a pipeline coming from Russia and I believe that Germany is going to be getting 50, 60, or even I've heard numbers of 70 percent of their energy coming in from Russia. And how can you be working for peace and working from strength when somebody has that kind of power over your country? I don't think it's good. You're not working from strength. You've given up all of your strength. Uh, I think it's very bad for Germany, very bad for the German people. And I don't think it's very good for NATO. You want to know the truth, so, okay? We've, we've uh, just, just, we said we would take four questions each, and we've taken four questions each. Um, I, I, just on the, the uh, pipeline issue on the Nord Stream, we've been talking to the Germans about this, we've been talking to other uh, countries within the European Union about this, and while we continue to sit around the EU table, this will be something that will be discussed at the European Union table, and obviously we'll make our views known there. Mr. President, thank us, you. Though? Can you share your views with us? Your position on Look, it, you the, the, we have been discussing this with Germany. The president has made clear his concerns about what is happening. Angela Merkel made her uh, position clear. Within the European Union, there are discussions to be held on this issue of, of uh, Nord Stream 2. Uh, and we're talking to other countries within the European Union. And I think the president said earlier in response to a question about a future meet, a meeting he was going to have, that he'd tell you uh, what was uh, happening after that meeting. And uh, we, you will see what comes out from the European Union. And while we're a member of the EU, because we still are, until the 29th of March 2019, and then we're leaving. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.